Powerful storms and tornado tornadoes have swept across central areas of the US, resulting in dozens of casualties, knocking out power to hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses across the region, and delaying the start of the iconic Indianapolis 500. 강력한 폭풍우와 토네이도가 미국 중부 지역을 휩쓴 결과 수십 명의 사상자가 발생하고 해당 지역 수십만 가구와 업체의 전기가 끊겼으며 유명 자동차 경주 대회인 인디 500 행사도 연기됐습니다. Tell us more. Uh, the past couple of weeks have been really awful for this part of the US. Mm. We're talking uh, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas and Kentucky. At least 15 people were killed. In Texas, there were another 100 injured, with um, the tornado destroying more than 200 homes and other buildings and damaging another 120. Mm -hmm. um, there was another in Dallas that knocked out power lines. And just five days previously, there were tornadoes that killed five and injured dozens in Iowa. And then two weeks before that, I don't know whether you saw the footage of the very, very scary storms that were slamming Houston. And then, to top it all, the Indianapolis 500, which is like the big event for those who love racing in the US, mm. had to be delayed on right. Sunday because of this impending inclement weather. And they had to ask the 125,000 fans to basically we need you to leave mm. because they're there for a few days normally. It's a, it's a big event, camp out, have barbecues, do whatever. Yep. And they said, seek shelter because it's not going to be safe. Mm. So it's a, it's a very big deal in the States right now, wishing everyone stay safe, right. stay indoors and uh, avoid the tornadoes. Mm. There was a big word that uh, stood out for me just there during your explanation, and yes. that was inclement. So when we talk about bad weather, we could just say bad weather. Uh, yeah. a, a sort of fancier word for it is inclement weather. Inclement. So clement means pleasant. Mm. So clement weather means, oh, the sun is shining, mm. the wind is blowing softly. Yeah. Inclement weather means it's raining cats yeah. and dogs. Not good. I-N-C-L-E-M-E-N-T. Inclement weather. 라고 하면 역시 악천후를 얘기합니다. 좋지 않은 날씨라는 뜻인데요. 자, 한번 보도록 하겠습니다. Uh, dozens of casualties arose from this. Uh, yeah, which is multiples of 12. And this mm. is an expression we use. For some reason, growing up as humans over the centuries, yeah. we've used base 10, but we've also used base 12 sometimes. That's right. Uh, if you look at the clock, for example, we mm. tell the time in 12. So yeah. dozens is a very common expression. We're only going to use it up to, you know, the 100 mark, for example. Mm. So when dozens is going to be under 100, but more than just 24, it's going right. to be 36, 48, 60, mm -hmm. 72. 80, 84, 96? You can stop. You 12 can stop times now. table. And don't ask me, because I can't help you there. Um, don't <laughs> ask you. <laughs> don't, um. All right, so dozens of something. 그러면은 쉽게 말해서는 수십 개란 뜻이지만 네. 아니면 수십 명, 사람이 될 수도 있고 물건이 될 수도 있고요. 그렇지만 사실 이 dozen이라는 단어는 열두 12명이라는 yeah. 뜻입니다. Well, pop quiz for you, Sue. Mm. How many eggs are there in a Korean carton? Uh, two dozen. Is it dozens? I, I don't know. Is it? I thought Koreans used a different measurement for eggs. I don't know. Because in the UK, it's yeah. a dozen or a half dozen or two dozen. Oh, okay. Have I got this wrong? I might have got this um, wrong. I apologise if I have. I bought eggs recently. I forget how many were on. 계란 한판몇 개 있어요? 여러분 알려주세요. 계란 한 판이 <웃음> 최근에 샀는데 <웃음> 기억이 안 나네. 예, 이거 우리도 뭐한 다스 뭐 이런 말 쓰지 않았었나요 예전에? 이게 여기서 온것 같은데. 예, 모르겠습니다만 영어에서는 어쨌든 제가 설명드릴게요. 네. 음식 뭐 이런 거에 대해서 질문하지 말아 주시길 좀 부탁드릴게요. 잘 몰라요. 죄송합니다. 네. 잘 못했습니다. 네. 이 다슨이라는 영어 표현은 제가 그래도 확실히 아니까 말씀을 드릴게요. 앞으로 열심히 하겠습니다. <웃음> 그러실 필요는 없고요. 원래는 12개, 12명이라는 뜻이지만 dozens of something 그러면은 이게 그냥 수십 개, 수십 명이라는 뜻입니다. 네, 그래서 네. 여기선 dozens of casualties, 사상자가 수십 명 나왔다. We're talking about death and injuries, that's casualties together. Yes. And um, it knocked out power in a lot of areas. Yeah, to knock out power, to cut out power, to cause a blackout, they all mean the same thing, is that you have no power. Mm. And the suggestion of knocked out power is it's being done through force. Mm -hmm. So it's not like someone's cut a cable, it's as if the wind has blown down the power lines. Mm. So we use this term, especially with tornadoes and storms or blizzards, when it feels like the wind or the pressure from the weather is actually knocking down cables or knocking down power lines. 네. Knock out. 라는 게 어, 이제 우리 뭐 KO 어, 그 boxing 할때 네. 네, 그때 쓰기도 하지만 knock out라는 것 자체가 무언가를 이렇게 쳐서 
쓰러트리다 네. 이런 의미가 있어서요. 파워 전력을 이제 나가게 한다. 전력이 끊겼다는 얘기입니다. Knocked out power. The tornadoes and the storms knocked out power in the central areas of America. And going back to the eggs, um, our lovely listeners yes. have helped out. They okay. said, 하, 한국에서는 하, 계란 한 판은 30개. 네, 맞아요. 네. It's, in, it's in tens, not dozens. 죄송합니다. 제가 잘 몰랐어요. 이제 yeah. 알겠어요? 이제 알겠습니다. <웃음> 그러네요. 우리는 그러면 dozens로 셀 수가 없네요. 30개니까. 네. 오, 네. 음. 계란. <웃음> 근데 영국에서는 보통 그러면은 스물네 개, 뭐 열두 개 yeah, 이렇게 한다는 dozen, 거죠. Half a dozen, a dozen, two dozen, and so on. Got it. I thought it was multiples of ten. You see? There you go. You're right. I am. Yeah. Always. <laughs> Very embarrassed. But let me read the headline again. Powerful storms and tornadoes have swept across central areas of the U.S., resulting in dozens of casualties, knocking out power to hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses across the region, and delaying the start of the iconic Indianap Indianapolis 500. I hope I pronounced that right. You did, you did. Well, let's move on to the next headline. Scientists have discovered a theoretically habitable planet, smaller than Earth but bigger than Venus, orbiting a cool red dwarf star about 40 light years away. 네. 국제 연구팀이 지구보다 작지만 금성보다는 크며 약 40광년밖에 차가운 적색 외성 주위를 돌고 있는 외계 행성을 발견했습니다. 이 별은 이론상 사람이 살수 있는 조건을 갖춘 것으로 알려졌습니다. Are we all moving to this new planet? I, I'm not sure. Perhaps Elon Musk is packing his bags right now, but this is quite interesting. I don't mm. think we'll move there in our lifetime. It's called Gliese 12b. Not a very catchy name, but that's what it is. Okay. And it's orbiting this cool red dwarf star in the constellation Pisces. Um, the star, the red dwarf, is about a, a third the size of our sun mm. and about 60% of its temperature. Um, and uh, it seems like it may be possible to live there because it's at the ideal distance, what they call the habitable zone, mm. where, you can, where life can be sustained. The funny thing is, one orbit is only 12.8 days as opposed to 365 days for us. Okay. Uh, so we're not sure. What they're, what they're trying to find out is whether there's water, because mm. water sustains life. But certainly, who knows, if we have to move off Earth, this might be one of the options. But if we were to live on this planet, does that mean we would grow older quicker? Because it goes around the sun every 12 days, did you say? No, but that's, yep. that doesn't affect how we age. Oh, that okay. just affects the seasons. All right. Shows how much I know about... You, you just you did you fall asleep <laughs> during Interstellar and you've misremembered. Yeah, the, I know the you... aging thing is about wormholes and black holes. Okay. Um, if you if you're getting towards the edge of a black hole, that's when time distorts, and that that's when Matthew McConaughey mm. has that kind of issue. So I never don't understood worry. that movie. You're gonna get older at the same pace as everyone <laughs> okay. else. Okay. All right. The first expression here is um, ha habitable. Yes, which mm. means uh, you're able to live there. It yeah. is a habitat that is suited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this term habitat is somewhere that something or someone lives. Yeah. So if it's habitable, it means it's suitable for us to live in. 네, 살수 있는 주거할 수 있다는 뜻의 habitable. 이 habit가 들어간 단어들이 살수 있다라는 의미가 있어서 habitat라고 하면은 이제 주거 어, 서식지라는 의미로 아니면 주거지가 될 수도 있거든요. Habitable 이렇게 발음을 하나요? That's how I say it. I don't okay. know how you say it. I, I wasn't sure. So habitable. I oh, habitable. I was, I was habitable. Habitable or habitable. Both are okay. 음, 그래요. 그래서 유엔 기구 중에도 그 habitat가 들어간 게 있잖아요. Yeah. 살수 있는 그런 의미가 있습니다. 그 다음에 오베트예요. Well, that's uh, the journey that a smaller-sized object makes around a larger-sized object mm. in space. Sometimes a circle, or sometimes more like an egg, an oval. Mm. 궤도를 돌다, 오벳한다 라고 말합니다. Here's the headline again. Scientists have discovered a theoretically habitable planet, smaller than Earth, but bigger than Venus, orbiting a cool red dwarf. Uh, red dwarf star, I should say, about 40 light years away and here's our final headline <coughs> oh so did you want it in english oh I yes was doing please it for the crow. sorry sorry a new study has found that crows can vocally count up to four and that the way the inquisitive birds recognize and react to numbers is similar to a process we humans use 
울음소리로 숫자 4까지 셀수 있으며 이들이 숫자를 인식하고 거기에 반응하는 방식이 인간과 유사하다는 새로운 연구 결과가 나왔습니다. I think you'll find it's pronounced. Magui. <웃음> so, the old saying, you know, being bird-brained yes. is wrong. Well, the thing is, we've known for a long time that corvids, and this is this this species yeah. of bird, this type of bird, including crows and magpies and mm-hmm. ravens, are very, very clever. Yeah. And they're puzzle solvers, and they, mm-hmm. they remember people, they can recognize you. And now these scientists have worked out that not just like chimpanzees mm-hmm. and humans, but it's crows as well that can count. Um, and they're using a very similar process to us. They did a study where they had visual and auditory cues. So they'd have uh, the numbers one to four, and they'd produce uh, the corresponding number of cores. So number one would be, ah! number two would be, ah! Ah! number three would be, ah! 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 and so on. Yeah. Um, and they found that the crows could recognize that, and they ah. would they would see the number, and then they would be able to repeat the number of cores that related to it, and then they would peck the enter button on a touch screen, it's remarkable. which is really remarkable, yeah. and they would get a treat, of course. I have to say, because humans are involved, mm-hmm. there's always a bit of thinking where you're going, well, you humans set this up to do this, so yeah. how much of your involvement is affecting the process? Mm. But it's just confirming once again that crows are really, really smart, yep. and you should always be kind to them, because they will remember you, and they will take revenge. 네, 이 까마귀과의 새들을 COVID라고 합니다. COVID가 아니고요. 네. C-O-R-V-I-D 라고 해서 이제 그 crows, magpies, ravens. 아니면, 그렇죠. 여기 이제 뭐 까치, 그 다음에 까마귀 네. 아마 다 들어갈 것 같아요. 그래서 까마귀과 애새들을 그렇게 부르는데 굉장히 똑똑하다는 것이 여러 연구에서 그동안에도 나왔지만 이번에 새로 밝혀진 것은 소리를 내서 사까지 셀수 있다는 것. 굉장히 놀랍죠. 자, 그 표현 보도록 하겠습니다. Vocally do something. Yeah, if you do something vocally, you do it with your voice. For example, yeah, yeah. I can agree with Sue vocally mm. or physically. Vocally, I say yes. Physically, I nod my head, which 아. you can only see on the Boynton Radio. 그래요? Yeah. So vocally means we're using our vocal cords. We're using 음. our voice. 네, 목소리를 이용해서 한다라고 할때 vocally 한다라고 하고요. 어, 이 새들을 표현하면서. Inquisitive birds, I was saying. I wonder what that means. Mm-hmm. I guess there's a QU in it, and QU sounds a little bit like question. Maybe question has something to do with inquisit. Or does oh. inquisit mean to ask? Is to be inquisitive to ask questions? To be curious? I think it might be. I think Paul is being very inquisitive right doing now. Doing the best, yes. <laughs> 굉장히 I 호기심이 think, 많고 탐구 yeah. 어, 탐구심이 많은 거죠. You know, inquisitive people always know the number of eggs in a carton. <웃음> I'm not then. I'm not inquisitive. There you go. <웃음> Happy now. <웃음> 자, inquisitive라는 게 이제 이렇게 굉장히 호기심이 많고 네. 뭔가 계속 질문을 던지는이라는 뜻인데 이 까마귀가 똑똑하기 때문에 이렇게 표현을 했고 사람한테도 정말 많이 써야 돼. This person is very inquisitive, and it's good to be inquisitive. Why? Because <웃음> you want to learn new things. Why? And you want to grow. Why? And become more intelligent. Why? Because it's time for us to move on. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the headline again. A new study has found that crows can vocally count up to four and that the way the inquisitive birds recognize and react to numbers is similar to a process we humans use. And that's it for the headlines.